Greetings everyone, I am glad to have your attention. My name is Red Maze and this is part 4 of 3 upcoming games you may not have heard of. This is the final part of this mini-series of impressions for games that were available during the recent Steam Next Fest 2023. If you haven't seen my previous 3 videos for all the demos, the links to those videos will be in the description. With that out of the way, let's wrap this mini-series up and allow me to show you 3 final more upcoming games that you may not have heard of. So for our first demo here, we have Urbano Legends Debut. So the choice of music for this rhythm game is great. The menu, the exploration music is quite literally a pop honestly, and even the music for the minigames are quite stellar. And they suit each minigame's theme and situation quite fantastically, as you can see here with some of the um, recorded footage here and some of the music that you'll be hearing. Um, this rhythm game is not one rhythm game, it's multiple rhythm minigames. And sure, the combat one could be argued as the main rhythm game, but being as simple as the other minigames and how often you'll be playing them during this game, the same could be said for the others as well. In either case, there's good, but it's pretty basic variety. But even then, each one is very enjoyable in its own way. Another thing that's really standing out for this game as well is that it's bursting with humor and personality. It's like dry dumb humor. And the MC being a sarcastic, partially depressed dude who's obsessed with belts for whatever reason. Not sure why that's the case. I didn't exactly catch on <laughs> specifically for that reason. Um, it does sort of help amplify the humor as well. The way he expresses himself during cutscenes and being how he is and understanding how he is as a character really helps kind of sell that humor as well. The other characters also have their own quirks and funny moments and they all have great overall designs. Each and every character in this entire game have very bold but also very notable designs that really help stick out for each character and their names also really sell that fact as well. Um, the art style is very striking. It's very bold with very thick outlinings and dark shadings, but it is balanced out by like the softer, more muted color palette, which makes it a little less harsh on the eyes, but still remains to be quite stunning and engaging in a sense. As some people have pointed out to me as well, the art style is also quite reminiscent of World Ends With You. The art style is very similar to that sort of game as well, but similar in that specific aspect, which I think is really, really cool. Honestly, it's a very nice and bold art style that I don't think many games tend to follow as well. And the story seems like a side gig for the music. It more so serves as a way to introduce the cast than to tell like a meaningful story. Even though this game sort of is giving off the impression that it is very much story focused. But even then, you could sort of tell that the story isn't its strongest point. Rather, it simply leads to, like, at least what this demo has shown off, is that it simply leads into strange encounters, which then leads into more random dry humor and more character banter, sort of rinse and repeat. It's basically that, from what I could tell. Which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing, but that's how the story seems to be playing out, at least from my perspective. So, overall, I'm more so enjoying the humor in the cast more so than the rhythm game itself, which is sort of weird being a primarily a rhythm game. I don't think there's anything bad about that though, since the rhythm portion of the game is basically just fun short mini games. but in itself, oh, which in itself I should say, kind of makes it a whole game. With all its mini games kind of built into one, just makes it a whole game instead, which is fine. I think that's absolutely fine. Regardless, I think this is worth checking out and playing for yourself.
For our next game, we have here Vampire Hunters. So, already, first impression straight off the bat. It's as if the Doom Slayer was able to clip his entire arsenal in one hand and then fires them all constantly, all at once. <laughs> That's what you get with this game. It's basically just that. Doom Slayer, give him his entire arsenal, put every single gun on both of his hands, and then just let him shoot to, to his own heart's content. That's what you get with Vampire Hunters. The sheer amount of guns that you could fire at once is so ridiculous that it just, it just becomes funny <laughs> and stupidly enjoyable for whatever reason. Like, just as you can see here with the footage um, playing right now in the background, look how many guns that I'm firing all at once. Like, you're not gonna get this anywhere else in any other game. Like, maybe, just maybe you would get it with like something like Ultra Kill, but but not to this extent. No way to this extent. It's a pretty simple and straightforward roguelike where it takes the push forward design philosophy quite literally as you run down a single corridor with spawning enemies that drop XP for you to level up and gain either a new gun or a new buff to a gun in your current arsenal. Now the push forward design philosophy is what the recent Doom games, I say recent as in 2016 and Doom Eternal, those games took the push forward design philosophy to its fullest potential. While Vampire Hunters just took it as it is and just made it as it is. And as you can see, it runs you straight down a single corridor, spawning enemies, and that's the whole game. Um, you can change your starting weapon and stats and passives according to whichever hunter you have available, with more hunters being purchasable between runs with gold that you pick up during those runs. So you could start off with like a basic shotgun and their stats could be very much different from the guy from another hunter that uses like a like a single shot pistol. It has some nice variety right there where you can choose what you start with and also allows you to play with different passives so each run is always sort of quite varied which everyone you'd like prefer to play with. From the demo, enemy variety is alright. You have bats, you have minotaurs, you have big bats, you have big minotaurs, you have floating skulls, and you even have a bigger floating skull, and you have some bosses. Nothing super special, it's just fodder for you to shoot and have fun with. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing super crazy, just by the looks. Maybe aside from the final boss that's available in this demo, that was pretty unique. Instead of running forward, you're running backwards and you're dodging ongoing like obstacles that come down your way. That was pretty unique, but maybe in the full game, you'll have something a lot more special. But as of right now, with what is available in this demo, this is what you get. So overall opinion, it's, it's just dumb fun, but it does sort of wear out its welcome kind of quickly. The gimmick, while funny initially, does become like a sound effects mess after a while. Just hear all these guns just blaring in your ears all at the same time, firing at the same time. But if you can look past that, then you have yourself a pretty simple boomer shooter with targets that can hurt and kill you if you aren't paying attention. But very little is at stake when you play. It's worth checking out if you need to play something with your mind turned off and you just want to shoot some stuff. For our final demo of this batch of demos, we have the world's worst handyman. So straight off the bat, I'm sure you can see without this footage here, its art style is very similar and even color pattern as well, is very similar to games like Overcooked and Moving Out. So it's bound to be mistaken as a, like a team 17 game. Nonetheless, it still has plenty of personality and a lot of random humor, as you can see here with this intro piece, which I still think is kind of hilarious and absolutely random. Um, I assumed with its title that we were going to be aiming to be the actual worst handyman out there, but instead we're actually doing the opposite while still technically being the worst. A little confused there. Um, it's also a little disappointing, but it being more accidental than intentional is still pretty funny, regardless. Um, the gameplay loot is quite familiar, but also pretty straightforward as well. The main objective is to clear out the toilet, 
hidden in these levels and you get a bunch of um extra side objectives each with their own challenges it tends to be not super difficult as they kind of are usually locked behind like a color-coded door and gates and the keys they just tend to be scattered around the house and backyard slash level and you just have to go find and scour for them while avoiding the ever pronounced danger that's in these households um the story if you can even call it story <laughs> uh the story is about a the story isn't about a handyman but it's about an animal shelter where two co-workers team up together funds to repair and refurbish it by becoming the handyman i think that's a little fun little twist that can be had with its title and all the more to take it very much less seriously because the story itself isn't that serious to begin with despite it being in a sense sort of serious but not serious it's a weird kind of thing going on here which i'm really down for okay so quick overall opinion um like the team 17 games i kind of wish this was multiplayer because I think this would be some great fun with another person where one distracts the, let's take the first level given here where you distract the grandma and the other gets to run past her or sneak past her to do the objectives. But no, we're stuck with Doug, who's great by himself and very un unintentionally capable at his job as a handyman. But hey, maybe this game will get like a multiplayer update like later down the line, but I think it's totally fine being a single player game as well. So I think this game is definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of Team 17 games, but you don't want the stress of your friends sabotaging a run at every given turn. And with that final demo, we have finally finished giving impressions to a total of 12 upcoming games that you may not have heard of. This little series was pretty darn fun to edit and record, especially if you were there for my recording sessions over my Twitch page, link in the description. Shameless plug aside, I truly hope that you have enjoyed this mini series as much as I have, and I hope you found a game that just maybe tickles your fancy and we're willing to check it out either when it officially releases or just to check out the demo for yourself. With that said, my name is Red Maze and I'm glad I got your attention. Thank you so much for watching this mini series to the very end. Hope you enjoyed the demos we've checked out together and I hope to see you in the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy, and take care.